Affinity Designer. So here we are, I've just opened the application and I've got it set so that it's all spread across the screen there. And it's okay. Uh, some people might quite like it like that and maybe if you change the uh, background it might look okay. So if we change it to a solid colour it could look uh, fairly decent. Let's change it to that and say okay. Spread about the screen you can see where all these different windows are and it's uh, a pretty good way of working I suppose and you can get back into this uh, view here and you can go in and zoom in and out to it. So let's do a zoom to fit and then you can spread it out and again you can do a zoom to fit. And it's a good idea also to learn some of these keyboard shortcuts like so for instance there we want to go for the command and zero. But you can also use it a different way as well. You can do it so that you've got it in non-separated mode and I quite like it like that. I like to have the whole screen taken up. And so with this uh, setting like this, you're getting the kind of the same effect anyway to a certain extent. Right? It's just that it's a bit more organized. So obviously you can do the basic sort of stuff where you want to put in um, various sort of shapes. So if you want to put a rectangle in there, it's quite easy to do so. If you want to put a uh, circle in there, you can put a circle in there. And as you can see, it's going from a circle to an ellipse. If I hold down a shift key, it is a perfect circle. And the same thing there with the uh, the square. So if I'm doing a, this here, instead of having a rectangle, hold down shift key and I get a perfect square. And you can get it to line up to various things. So there is lining up to the side of the one above there. And there, a bit further across, and it's going to line up to the centre of the document. And you've got a few other shapes that you can add in there too. So let's uh, see what we can choose. We've got triangles, diamonds, trapezoids, and all these sorts of things here. Donuts and so on. Let's go for a star. So let's uh, put a star in there. And again, if you hold down the uh, shift key, you get a uh, more regular sort of shape that's uh, going in there. So we've got a couple of control points on our star there. And I can take this point here and I can change the side of the star there. Or I can change this point here and change it from a star into a five-sided object. When I'm creating a shape like this, I might want to start from the center rather than from where the pointer starts. And I can just do that by holding down the command key. And once again, if I hold down the shift key, it will keep it constrained. Okay, so let's come out of that there. Let's go to this tool here for moving things around so I can change the position of that there. So I can move it to there, for instance. So as you can see on these objects here, we've got various uh, resizing handles and grab a corner there and you can change it to the shape of it just exactly as you want to there. And hold down the shift key again and it's uh, keeping it constrained. I can go to one of these side ones here and bring it in and out that way. So if I want to make it wider, just make it wider, I can do that. Command and Z to put it back the way it was. We can do a turn here and as you can see, we've got a little um, indication in the center there about how much we're turning there. So if I want to go 90 degrees, turn there. If I hold down the shift key, it does it in 15 degree increments. So if I go full 180 degrees on that there, I can see that I've got 180 degrees and it'll snap to the 15 degree increments, which is quite nice. It would be nice if there was the option to change where the uh, center rotation is. At the moment, the center rotation is directly in the middle of this object. So if I've got this sort of shape like this here, for instance, and I turn this around, it's still going to be in that exact center of the object and I can't move it. It'd be nice to be able to say, well, I want to have the center object over here, or I want it here, or I want it over here. But at the moment you can't do that, but the developers are working on it and they're going to change that as soon as they're able to. It is on their list. Changing the color. Where's my color palette? So my color palette over the side here, I can make that green. I can change the... Um, the outside edge of that there. So let's say I want to have the outside edge in red. Uh, maybe I want it in blue. So there's different things you can do. I can change the, the line. So we've got the brush width on there. We've got it like that. Oh, that's a bit too big, that is now. And maybe I want to have it at five pixels. So I can put in a number in there just as... Uh, so I'll put a number in there just as I can easily change it by moving this across. In fact, it's actually easier to change it putting a number in there. You've got the usual thing there where you can decide where you want it in the order. So you've got these um, things at the top here. I can move it back one or I can move it to the rear altogether. That one there. So now it's the rear of everything. So I put it behind and it's the bottom of the stack as it were. We can see in this uh, layers palette over here, you can have loads of things all in one layer, which is quite handy if you want to do something where you've got a specific effect applying to all the things on a layer. You apply the effect to the layer and you're done. 
So that's the first look at this application, Affinity Designer. As you can see, it's quite an accomplished application. I really like it. So I'll have a look at more things we can do with Affinity Designer in the next video. Bye-bye now.